The Carolina Panthers also shaking things up here. They announced Wednesday that the team has rescinded the non-exclusive franchise tag on cornerback Josh Norman, making him a free agent. Panthers GM Dave Gettleman said after a number of conversations with Josh's agent, they realized that a long-term deal was not attainable. Here was Josh Norman on our show talking about the importance of getting a long-term deal done. This was back in March. Take a listen. It's great to be wanted, but at the same time, um, knowing that... Um, some things got to be done to order to get past just wanting for one year. And I respect everything, you know, that the Panthers organization had brought. And nothing is personal between us. Nothing is personal. It's just the business side, which just sucks, you know. Mm. It really does. Mm -hmm. And it gets, you know, that personal side in, on the business. Yeah. And that's what you got to try to, you know, work your way through. Certainly is a business, Skip. What do you make of the Panthers pulling the franchise tag? <sighs> I don't know what I was more shocked by yesterday. The Eagles trading up from eight to two, or this team saying no to Josh Norman. And Stephen A, I'm sure there's still some long shot chance that they'll work something out before July, maybe, who, who knows. But I'm going to assume it's over with Josh Norman and the Carolina Panthers. And I'm going to assume that's a huge mistake on the part of the Carolina Panthers. I'm assuming their management finally took the stance that it sounds like yesterday Patrick Peterson, Chris Harris Jr. took, that Josh Norman's a little overrated, that he won't ever be worth the, what, 15 or 16 million that, that he and his agent were asking for from Carolina. I'm assuming Josh is going to get that on the open market. I've had my doubts in the past on this show about Josh Norman because he does play a lot of zone corner. So you can say, well, he's a little protected by the players around him. But I got to tell you, after I watched your New York football giants and Odell Beckham try to deal with this man, I was really impressed by Josh Norman that day because Josh Norman obviously got inside Odell's head, got inside his jersey, and he suffocated him in that football game. And I was extremely impressed because that was shut down corner type play from him against clearly can we go this far the most talented receiver when we say Odell's the most talented receiver in pro football and I know Odell came apart psychologically but I think he came apart physically against Josh also Josh Norman became the emotional leader of that defense this year Josh Norman sort of grew up before your very eyes and he was always around the ball and he, he often set the tone for that defense I know Keekley did too but I gotta tell you that where I was left last night was I'm thinking, hey, Jerry Jones, think about it. Think about strapping your cap here to try to squeeze Josh Norman under your cap because I'd like him a lot more than I would Brandon Carr or Mo Claiborne. And I know Jerry's got a couple of young offensive stud linemen that are going to come due here pretty soon. But Josh Norman is now on the market, and you don't have to give up anything to get him. You just got to pay him. I would pay him because this is a shocker to me that they would let him go. Well, it's a shocker to me as well, and I've been on the phone all morning talking to various people uh, that I know close to the situation, and from what I'm being told, Skip, uh, the agent for Josh Norman didn't necessarily represent him in the right way. I don't know who this guy Mike George is. I never heard of him, but I will tell you uh, that Josh Gordon, Josh Norman, I'm sorry, I'm saying Josh Gordon, Josh Norman uh, was of the mindset uh, that, again, you know, he wanted to stay in Carolina. Last time I spoke to him was a couple of weeks ago. He was hell-bent on staying in the Carolina Panthers uniform. He believes uh, that they've got an opportunity to win the Super Bowl last uh, next season. Obviously, the great year that they just had coming off a 15-1 season and getting into, getting to the Super Bowl, really 17-1. He wanted to stay in, in Carolina. He didn't want to leave. He was under the impression that his representation uh, was trying to get as much money for him as they could. Now, they were told that they could go and talk to other teams to see what kind of offer that they could get and they were hopeful that Carolina would come back with more years more money as opposed to a one-year 13 million dollar franchise tag but in, the, in a worst case scenario Josh Norman had every intention of going to the Carolina Panthers next week and signing a one-year franchise tag and staying in Carolina because he doesn't want to leave. So the fact that the Carolina Panthers will pull the offer off the table, that doesn't appear to be about Josh Norman. It appears to be about his representation. And even though ultimately you are responsible because your representation ultimately answers to you, you're responsible if you know specifically what your representation is doing, not if you're unaware of some of the things that are going on. Now, I haven't been able to reach Josh 
Josh Norman this morning. I certainly called, but I would tell you something right now. The Josh Norman that I've come to know over the last few months, that I've spoken to on numerous occasions, that I interviewed leading into the Super Bowl, that is not a man that wants to leave Carolina. That's a man that wants to stay in Charlotte, North Carolina, playing for the Panthers. He's 28 years of age. He came into the NFL at 24. The team that gave him the shot, this kid out of Coastal Carolina, are the Carolina Panthers. He wants to stay. So if I'm David Gettleman and the crew, if I'm Mr. Richardson, the owner for the Carolina Panthers, and I'm preaching about family, and I'm preaching about loyalty, and the agent was the one that was representing him playing hardball or what have you, before I put the nail in the figurative coffin on this matter, Matter, I take a phone call from Josh Norman or I pick up the phone and I call him myself and I talk about whether or not that you whether or not you want to be here and if the worst case scenario is him signing that one year tender at 13 million then I would advise Josh Norman to sign the one year deal and take the 13 million because this is a guy skip that has collected only three million dollars in his career his biggest payday in his career was this past season of 1.5 million dollars so to go from 1.5 to 13 million in football as violent as it is of course you want a longer term deal but if worst case scenario is you signing a franchise tag and if he's willing to do that I think that's something that the Carolina Panthers should open the door and make sure they let happen because it seems a bit shady to me right now because I can't believe that Josh Norman, the guy that I talked to that was hell-bent on staying in Carolina, would allow something this ridiculous to transpire. I don't believe it for one second, and from what I'm hearing, he's telling folks he did not that it was somebody else, meaning his representation. So stay tuned because I don't know what the hell's going on. Okay, but are you suggesting that you want Josh Norman to now crawl back to Carolina and say, please give me back the franchise tag, or I will take far less money to sign longer term. I'll take $12 million a year to sign longer term instead of 15 or 16 Well, first of all, it all depends on whether or not he can get $15 million from somewhere else. I do I'll understand what can. you're saying. And I'm, and I'm certainly not saying to him that he should go and crawl back to the Carolina Panthers. What I'm saying is, is that if you're the Carolina Panthers, if you didn't converse with Josh Norman about what transpired here, you two owe it to one another to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about what really transpired before anything is fragmented beyond repair, as opposed to specifically and solely relying on his representation, who, from what I'm being told, Josh Norman is telling folks that the agent representing him didn't represent his specific interest in this matter not the way that he wanted it represented. So if that's the case, if you're the Carolina Panthers and you got an all-pro corner who's out there performing for you and helped you get to the Super Bowl, you owe one another a conversation before you part ways. That is what I am saying. Okay, so are you suggesting that you're hearing Josh is blaming the agent for acting independent yes. of, of that's Josh? What I was, that he was operating what, on that, his own autonomously, that he was the one asking for 15 or 16 million that alienated Panthers management? Is that what we're no, saying? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to ever say that, a re, that an agent misrepresented a player in terms of asking for the amount of money that they were asking for. But when you play hardball to a point where the Carolina Panthers, using this example, is able to shut off talks and walk out the door, that's certainly not representing your client's interest if your client makes it clear to you that he wants to stay. So nobody's going to sit up there and say that Josh Norman wasn't trying to get as much money as he could possibly get. But at the same time, if it's been made clear to you that the door's about to be shut, this is opposition, and there we go. And that's not something that was conveyed to Josh Norman before the Carolina Panthers ultimately reached this conclusion, then you haven't represented him as adroitly as you should have. Those are the kind of things that I'm talking about. Let's make sure that Josh Norman was represented in the fashion that he wanted to be represented. It's one thing to go after your money. It's another thing when somebody says, take it or leave it, and it's not presented to you as a take it or leave it proposition until the offer is stripped from you, and now you've got to go out in free agent market and look for another job. I know, I'm but, quite but, sure. But, but, <laughs> you, you act like that's a, a terrible thing. Oh, he's forced to go on to the free agent market and look for a, will somebody well, it please depends give on what me you a want. job? I mean, he whoa, could whoa, whoa. just say, it thank you, on, God, it, I'm free. It, I can it, do whatever it I want. Depends on, 
It depends on what you want, Skip. That may be accurate if all you wanted was the money. But if you wanted the money specifically from Carolina, because that's the team that you've played with in your career, that's the city that you've played in, that's where you want to be, then that's an entirely different matter. It's all relative. For somebody like you and others, it might not matter. For somebody like him, it may very well matter that he stays with the team that he played with. Remember, you played at Coastal Carolina. They picked you up when mm -hmm. you were 24 years of age. You want to be here with Cam and the crew. You might not want to go somewhere else. So I'm saying it's incumbent upon Carolina to find that out before you shut the door. Okay. I think but, but that just, that's fair. You know and I know this is big advantage Carolina management right now. That, that if the, they just called his bluff, whether it's the agent's bluff or Josh's bluff, they just said, no, we're out. And the only way this can be rectified, the only way they can rebuild a relationship now, Josh is going to have to crawl back for far less money. And, and well, I, I doubt he's going to do that. Well, I'm, I'm just saying he's that's, do that. what, that's the position he's just been thrust into. It's, I but, think worst case scenario for Josh is that he accepts the one year $13 million tender. But they rescinded it. They said, we don't want to do that because well, we think ongoing that, that our, our inability to sign you long term is going to be a distraction for our football team. And they said, we're out. We don't want the one year okay. because it will only lead to, to uh, building you know, problems here between the two of us. Okay, well then it's not gonna work. But I'm telling you from what I'm being told, what his wish is. Because his wish was never for Carolina to shut the door. I can tell you that. Okay, well it just got slammed in his face. So now he's gonna have to deal with the one. He can either go back for far less money and hope they would take him back, or he can, he can embrace the fact that he's one of the top cornerbacks in football and he is now free to negotiate with anybody anywhere with no compensation owed back to Carolina. Yeah. Okay. That's true. That's true. And that could very well be an advantage if he ends up going someplace he actually likes I to be. I agree. Yep. But right now, he wants to be in Carolina. Well, okay. now, now Adam reported yesterday, Adam Schefter, that, that he likes California. I don't know, but, but so they were speculating on 6 o'clock Sports Center. Would he, you know, would he like the Raiders? You know, uh, 49ers have huge cap money. I, I don't know Here's that he would want to go there. Here's what I'm hearing right Every... now. This just came down. Yeah. Adam Schefter, David Newton reporting. There's up to 10 teams interested. Mm -hmm. No surprise. The team showing the most interest, the Niners, as you mentioned, yeah. one of the five teams with the most cap space. The Redskins, Steelers, and Dolphins right now are expressing the most interest. But uh, Steelers. 10 teams. I knew that. Was I would love them with hey, the Steelers. See, now, I would love them with the Steelers. Happy. Now you're happy that, that would, they I... just said no to Josh Norman, right? Well, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's nothing that's now. I'm not happy happy nor unhappy it ain't my money I'm mm. fine I'm just telling you what I've been hearing and I'm saying to you that if somebody wants to be in a particular locale uh, that, that, that's something that you have to take into consideration also you got to think about it Carolina was willing to put the tender on the table to begin with so to yank it off to all of a sudden come to the conclusion we don't want to have to deal with this in the future I, I think that kind of makes them look bad because again if you got somebody that's produced for you yep. and you gave the impression that you were going to take care of them and suddenly you rescind on that kind of offer yep. particularly if the if the guy is out there spreading noise that that was his agent as opposed to his wish then if you're the Carolina Panthers and you still want to keep the door shut, then I think that's a message to future potential candidates for wearing a Carolina Panther uniform okay. that this is the way they choose to do business. Well, now they're stuck with or left with Benet Ben Wickery or Robert McClain. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll continue to track this, but up next.